Community Co-ops Program must benefit Nigerians. And the key point is that implementation of the 774,000 public works to be put on hold until implementation modalities is explained to the National Assembly. The National Assembly is concerned about the proper and effective implementation of the engagement of 774,000 public works workers and wishes to restate its commitment to its success. Accordingly, the National Assembly reminds members of the public that the legislature was part of the conception of the program, approved it, and appropriated funds for its implementation as part of the COVID-19 response strategy. The National Assembly, in line with its constitutional oversight function, has mandated its committees of labor on labor and productivity to immediately invite the Honorable Minister for Labor and Productivity and any other relevant officials of the ministry to appear before the Joint Committee to brief it on the modality for the implementation of the engagement of 774,000 persons for public works. In accordance with the constitutional imperative of oversight, the legislature being important stakeholders in the democratic process and elected representatives of the people needed to be appraised of modalities for implementation for effective feedback to our constituents and in ensuring that our constituents optimally participate in and benefit from the process. In view of the foregoing, the implementation of the program shall be on hold pending proper briefing of the National Assembly by the Minister of Labor and Productivity. The National Assembly will ensure transparency of the process just as done with the National Social Register by the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. Signed, Senator Dr. Ajibola Bashuru and Honorable Benjamin O. Kalu, both of all spokesperson of the two chambers of the National Assembly, respectively. That is the decision. Okay. Vanguard, really good. Punch, Guardian. Punch, Vanguard. It's English, sir. I am here to move a report for Vanguard. Against the backdrop of what happened yesterday between the Minister of State for Labor and Productivity and the National Assembly of the I want to look at item five, yes. where you said you will, the Minister of Labor and Productivity will brief you people before they can continue. What if Senator Chris Ibide is out for another national assignment and decides to send Festus Keano to represent him at the briefing? Will you recognize I don't, him? I don't deal with uh, hypothetical cases. Your question with utmost respect is hypothetical. And also, I'm a human being. I don't have power of clairvoyance. So I wouldn't know whether the minister will come or will not come. At appropriate time, the National Assembly will know what to do. And I want to say, with all sense of responsibility, that National Assembly is an institution. We cannot personalize our issue. Ministry is also an institution. So I would not. I would respect, I will, I, will, I will reject an invitation to personalize this very important national issue with utmost respect to you. So I will not go to speculation. Uh, excuse me, my name is Atekwojo Samson. This is my right for daily post. Uh, in the last 12 hours, uh, uh, the control of the half of yesterday has the senior minister reporting, of course, to the Senate. Well, then secondly, from what we have read, if uh, the union minister decides to go ahead with the program, what is the sanction of value? You see, I will also not go to this, your second question. Or if it is not, uh, it's hypothetical, <laughs> academic, and speculative. At appropriate time, <laughs> we'll be able to deal with that uh, one. Then on the issue of the minister getting across to the Senate, we are seeing that the Senate inviting publicly, not clandestinely, inviting him through his appropriate committee, and the letter will be sent across. There's nothing to hide 
So we don't need some tutors or underground communication with minister, whether senior, junior, state, main minister. We are authentic representative of Nigerian people. What we are doing is in line with our constitutional mandate and also as authentic representative of people. So the question of whether reaching across, I will tell you that I'm not aware of that. We don't expect that. We expect that it should come. And this thing is not about individual. As I said, it's about constitution. They are appointee of the president in whom the executive power is vested by section five of the constitution. So, and we are also acting according to the mandate given to our people. We are not just air appointed. We are air duly submitted ourselves to democratic scrutiny of our people and were elected to represent different constituency all over the country. What constitutional, what constitutional party I'm telling you? Does, it, does the National Assembly have to put the program or do you have the power? We have the power. You see, oversight function of the National Assembly is to see that anybody, and I use the word anybody, using resources of the state, we have the power to oversight them. Oversight function ensuring that the money is used for the purpose for which it is used and in accordance with our oath and the oath of the minister and the president. That is to act in the interest of the state without fear or favor, affection or ill will. The money that is being used for this project is appropriated by the National Assembly. So if you are now saying that when we appropriate, we cannot oversee what we appropriate, then I don't know what is the essence of the express oversight power given to us. It's not, I don't want to go to controversy of somebody said this, so this is an assemblage of elected people, state men who know what they are doing. This is not student union issue. It's a serious matter and we are taking it very serious. Yes, yes. Why, why not, yes, yes. Uh, why admitting that the National Assembly has the power to oversight or investigate? Your directive or order that the exercise be put on hold until the minister appears. Don't you think you are encroaching on the powers of the president? You see, uh, if the president sees that uh, our power is being approached, they can approach the court of law. What we are saying is this. This project, the way you are looking at it, is as if it's an exclusively presidential project. From the paragraph two of our statement, you will see that, that the conception of the program is approval and this funding is with the consent of the National Assembly. Because we think it's going to be beneficial for the purpose of addressing challenges of COVID-19. So to the, 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 your perspective of saying encroaching on the power of the president, there is no exclusivity in terms of any program that is to be implemented. Unless you are saying National Assembly is not part of government. Government as defined in the 1999 Constitution as to the components. Executive power, section four. Uh, executive power, section four. Executive power, section five. Judicial power section six is the totality of this that constitutes government. So when I said government is doing program, it's not the president, Muhammad Bali, that is doing program. It is the government of the people, implementation, appropriation, execution, roll all into one. So there's no dichotomy as such as encroaching on the power of the president. Assuming the National Assembly is opposed to the program, we could have not approved it. We could not have appropriated, but we are in full support of the program. But we want to be sure that names don't just fly, as you journalists also raise issue about the humanitarian social register. But when the National Assembly intervenes, there's more transparency to it. Our people who also ask questions. These 1,000 people, how were they generated? Who set up the selection committee? What are the modalities for recruitment? What are the minimum requirements for recruitment? It cannot be left to the whims of a person or to a branch of the government. It has to be a totality of involvement of, 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 of uh, executive and legislative arm. Uh, okay, yes. uh, yes. uh, no, no. yes. yes. okay. yes. Mr. Mr. Remember yesterday, I don't like, said, I, I, prefer, I prefer doctors to special. Okay, sorry, sir. Yes. <laughs> yesterday, the Senate uh,
promised to honor their colleague that died in a valedictory session. Today, that did not happen, and no reason was adduced. So we'd like to know why it did not happen. You see, if question is not asked, then answers will not be given. Now that you have asked now, then we are bound to provide answer. The valedictory organization does not only involve the status, it also involves the family and friends and associates of the deceased. Frantic effort was made to make it happen today by getting the family and associates to be around. But you know the lockdown interstate just been eased down. So we cannot uh, clap with one hand. It has to be with two hands. So as soon as we're able to get the family involved, then it will be done. The, the person is not just a colleague, it's also personal to me. He's my leader and my benefactor. Oshinawa. He's so less with perfect peace. Very emotional for some of us. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, dear colleagues, okay, the third person was fed today. Yes. And uh, <laughs> gladly also, he has sent the 